Um, well, um, Red uh, apparently decided to uh, double down cowardly, as, of course, these people always do, right? Now, listen, to her credit, to her credit, she actually went on to the Fresh and Fit podcast and, um, you know, debated. Uh, but it became very clear uh, at about the three-quarter mark that she she had an agenda. She had an agenda. Uh, she jumped into, <clears throat> she, she went on to the Fresh and Fit podcast, and she debated and argued in bad faith. Um, she was dishonest. Um, she, there was selective hearing. She twisted her word. She changed her story. She moved the goalpost. Typical, the typical behavior of a woman who thinks like she does. Well, uh, it appears she put this on her Instagram story. Uh, this is on her Instagram story. And um, <clears throat> her story says, quote, Hope the boys realize tactics like the one they encourage to use, like manipulation and inflicting anxiety on women who don't want to have sex with them, are the same tactics used by e to coerce and actually assault women. Ay, 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 ay. Let's, let's, uh, let's take this. Let's take this from the top. Let's take this from the top. Um, number one. Number one. Um, we can already see. Uh, she has no respect for men because she calls them boys, right? Right. When 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 women call men boys, that's you know clearly, that's clearly uh, disrespectful. Uh, that that she's she's trying to she's trying to use disrespect. Uh, number two, um, like the ones they encourage to use like manipulation. Um, Myron Gaines made it crystal clear, along with everyone else. Who was watching? Oh no, Ice Dragon Kid said the lady is nuts, man. No, she's not nuts at all. She's not nuts at all. Um, she is, listen, she is the product of the culture. She's the product of the culture, guys. And so she says, inflicting a, 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 a manipulation. There is nothing manipulative about telling a woman who is in your place, who has made it clear she does not want to have biblical relations with you, to please exit. There's nothing manipulative about that. Now, if I'm at my house, I'm not going to walk into another room and make another phone call. I'm not going to, I'm not looking out for her feelings, right? At that point, if you don't want to hear who I'm talking to on the phone, then you can leave my place. If you don't want to leave at that point, now you are now trespassing, right? So when someone, when someone in their domicile advises you that you are no longer welcome in their home and you stay there anyway, that is trespassing. That's trespassing. So when you were ordered, okay, no problem. We went out. We had a good time. You don't want to smash? Cool. I'm going to I'm going to call another girl. Oh, my God, you shouldn't have said that. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Look out for her feelings, right? Like, again, I don't I don't really care about her feelings, right? Right. See, see again, just like you said, listen, women, women truly believe that their feelings are worth more than the blood, sweat, and tears you endured earning the money that you used to take her out. Now, nobody forced you to take her out. Nobody forced you to take her out. And guys, I'm here to tell you, if you take a woman out on a date, a dinner date, with the intention of smashing at the end, guys, that's not the right frame of mind to be in. She doesn't owe you anything. And because she doesn't owe you her body, guess what? You don't owe her dinner. Guys, law number three of the 49 laws of Sharp, you guys gotta get it, donovansharp.com slash 49 laws. Never feed her before you smash her. Never feed her before you smash her. Guys, there are women out here who go on dates with men they are not sexually interested in, unbeknownst to the man who's taking them out on the date. There are countless articles, videos, you name it, st story after story of a woman who says, you know what, at the end of the month when I'm broke, which is when most women are broke, I download the Tinder app and I use the Tinder app to get fed, right? It's not a problem when women do this, right? They lead men to believe that they are sexually interested, knowing full well they're not going to smash at the end of the night. But then they want to complain, oh my God, these men are out here having sex with women but not committing to them. I'm sorry, but that's literally the same thing. The same girl who complains about the Alpha Chad or the Tyrone who smashes her every night but doesn't give her any commitment, that's the same girl who downloads Tinder at about the 21st of every month to feed herself. I mean, listen, man, I mean, that's actually an even value exchange. It's not, it's not being exchanged equally, but she's giving up the booty and getting fed. I don't know. I don't really know what the problem is. 
But the fact of the matter is that the reason why these women called what Myron instructed men to do as manipulation is because it became clear to them that a man who was exercising his options is attractive. Let's not get it, let's not get it twisted. The reason why Myron encourages guys to call, this is what Myron says. He says, if you have a girl at your place and you want to smash and she makes it clear that you don't want to smash, you, you pick up your phone and you call another girl. Do it in front of her. There's nothing abusive about that. That is simply you exercising your options. Now, the reason why these women had a problem with it is because they were privy to the process. If they had never, ever heard this from anyone before, and they themselves were in that situation where they were at a man's house, he tried to get busy. They said, you know what? I'm not really into this. And he said, no problem. Coolly pulls out his phone and calls another girl to come over. They know they would be turned on. It turns women on. Women who, women who witnessed men exercising their sexual options with a stone face, no problem, I'm not going to get butt hurt. I'm simply going to call the next girl in my rotation. That's a turn on. That's a turn on. Men with options who exercise options and do not really care who's around when they're exercising them are naturally attractive to women. This is not manipulation, gentlemen. What Myron explained, what Myron explained to men to do in those situations is quite literally the same as a woman putting on mascara and eyeshadow to make her eyes look larger, right? I mean, women can make themselves attractive to men on purpose. So why can't men? Well, the reason why men can't make themselves attractive to women on purpose is because that gives them, that levels the playing field, right? And in some cases, it even gives men an advantage in the sexual marketplace. Law number 29 of the 49 laws of Sharp, women cannot stand it when they do not have a decided advantage in the sexual marketplace. This is why Red lost her mind. She understood very clearly the tactic Myron was using and the mindset behind that. In Myron's case, he puts himself in a win-win situation. Okay, she doesn't want to smash? Great. I'm going to call another girl right in front of her. Guess what? He's going to get laid one way or the other. He's either going to get laid by the girl there or the girl on their way over, or if he's lucky, maybe even both, right? Like if you're a real G, hey, what's up? Yeah, come on over. No, 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 that's okay. I'll stay. Okay, you can stay, but she's still coming over, right? <laughs> Listen, the reason why these girls, the reason why Red characterized it as manipulation is because she knows that behavior is attractive. And because Myron is, is instructing men to be attractive on purpose, that was her problem. You are helping men to become attractive on purpose under the guise of you're manipulating women. I'm sorry. And women don't manipulate men with ass lifting jeans, push up bras, ridiculous makeup to make them look like different people. There's no manipulation there, right? Where's all the outrage over that, right? Listen, if women, if women want men like us to stop teaching men how to become attractive and build sexual attraction on purpose, stop wearing makeup. What's that? What's that? Makeup? It, oh, well, fine. If you guys want to continue wearing makeup, then guess what? We are going to advise men that if there is a woman at your place and she doesn't want to smash, you call another girl in front of her to let the girl in front of you understand that, hey, listen, if it's not you, it's going to be someone else. Just because that happens to make a man more sexually attractive does not make it manipulation any more than putting on makeup is a deceptive practice. It is literally, literally the same thing. Then, of course, she says, and inflicting anxiety. You see, there's a difference between anxiety and competition anxiety. Now, the reason why we call it competition anxiety is because it sounds a little bit better, right? It sounds a little bit better. Instead of using a word like, I don't know, making her jealous or the abundant, listen, if you want women, if you want women fighting over you, you give them competition anxiety, right? This is what Barnett did with Jessica, oh boy, with Jessica, Amber, and LC. He had all three eating out of the palm of his hands, and all three of them knew it. Guess what they had? 
competition anxiety. Now, is that the clinical? Here's where Red was so transparently disingenuous. Competition anxiety is not the real definition of anxiety. Women who have competition anxiety, women who feel the need to compete for a man, that doesn't cause them to go to the doctor and say, you know what, doctor, I have competition anxiety. Oh, really? Tell me what's going on. Well, there's this hot guy and me and like four other girls are sleeping with him, but he's not committing to either any one of us. And it just feels like I'm in competition with these other girls. I'm competing. I have competition anxiety. Well, in that case, Christina, let me write you out a prescription for Zoloft. No, that's not how it works. Just because it's called competition anxiety, just because that's what we call it, doesn't mean that's actually what it is, right? She lab- and, and it's funny because she only said inflicting anxiety. Nobody's inflicting anxiety. A man who exercises his options in such a way that lets another woman know that he has options, that causes competition anxiety. Listen, I can't help how you feel. I'm not going to try to dictate how you feel. That's just how this goes. Red's problem is that, again, she was using disingenuous language, inflicting anxiety. No, nobody's inflicting anxiety. Nobody's, listen, nobody, when a girl rejects a guy and he kicks her out and calls another girl, she's not at the doctor's office the next day getting a script for, for Cymbalta. <laughs> like, come on, like, 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 seriously, like, are we kidding with this? On women who don't want to have sex with them, right, are the same tactics used by eparists to coerce and assault women. I'm sorry. So if Myron picks, so, so, so if a girl is at my house, if a girl is at my house, I pick up the phone. She says she doesn't want to smash. Just you know, listen, listen, humor me here. Let's just play this out. We're at my house, me and pick a girl. I don't know, Susie. Hey, Susie, let's get down. Uh, you know what? Eh, I'm not really into this. I like you, but I don't really like you like that. I want you to get to know me. Hey, no problem. No problem. I take out my phone. Do, 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 do. Hey, Lindsay, what's up, man? It's Donovan. Yeah, hey, listen, uh, what are you up to? Uh, Lindsay, hang on a second. What's the problem? Well, why wouldn't I? I mean, you're well within your right to leave if you want. Well, sweetheart, this is my house. I can do whatever I want. Listen, you're, oh, I, listen, I understand. You're more than welcome to leave, so go on and leave. Okay. Really? <laughs> okay. I mean, listen, I'm not trying to force you to do anything you don't want to do. No, listen, no, like, li- li- listen, listen, listen. If you don't want to smash, then it's cool. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not tripping. Like, I can, like, li- I mean, listen, you're off the hook, right? Hey, Lindsay there? Yeah. No, I got a girl at my place. Just, just give me a second. Give me a second. Wait, what? All right. I mean, listen, I mean, I mean, listen, I'm going to the bullpen. Like, it's, I mean, if you have to get up early, it's all okay. Hey, hey, Linz. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Um, uh, Let's uh, let's hook up tomorrow. Okay. All right. Now, if Susie then has sex with me, how is that sexual assault? Hmm. How is that? How is that assault? How is that assault? That's not manipulation. That's not inflicting anxiety. That is simply me exercising options. I like Susie. I thought Susie liked me like that. She told me that she didn't. No problem. I call Lindsay. All of a sudden, Susie gets turned on by the fact that I can just call up a woman and have her at my house if she decides not to have biblical relations with me. That's not manipulation. That's just me exercising options. Now, I mean, listen, a guy could just call a girl to try to make himself attractive. But even if that even if that was his intent, it's still going to happen either way. Right. Like, listen, let's not pretend that guys calling another girl in front of another uh, in front of another girl. The intent is to put is to let her know, hey, listen, if it's not going to be you, it's going to be somebody else. If that's the intent, then that's the intent. That's not against the law. If you don't want to, someone else will. That's not manipulation. This is just me explaining to you in no uncertain terms that you're off the hook, baby girl. If you don't want to do this, it's all good, right? 
That's how this works. And again, just like just like Tricky Trini said, competition anxiety is not a clinical diagnosis. And, and tr dude, Tricky Trini is a freaking doctor. For this woman to characterize this manipulation and inflicting anxiety as something that actually that that women actually have to go to the doctor for, that's disingenuous. Now, later on in life, after having gotten ran through, yes, they do really have to go to the doctor and get prescribed anxiety and antidepressant meds, as one in four of them do over the age of 30. But there is no manipulation tactic going on. And the same, you want to know what tactics e parists use? You know what they do? You know what they do? They force you against your will. That's what they do. e parists aren't calling, e parists aren't calling up other girls. An e parist wouldn't tell you to leave. You, you want to know what an e parist would do? Not this. An e parist would force himself on that woman instead of telling her to leave. He would make it so that she doesn't leave. Monica knows this. And for her to pretend that she genuinely does not understand this, it is disingenuous at best, irresponsible at worst. That's all there is to it. Monica, you're a fucking idiot. Listen, Myron didn't say it, so I will. You are stupid. You are stupid. You are a pick a Miami adjustable six with a bunch of booty pics on Instagram who thinks she knows more than she does. It is what it is. I feel sorry for the man who actually puts a ring on your finger. What's that you say? You're not going to get married till you're 35? Thank God for that. Thank God for that.